Hey everybody, Brendan here, welcome back to a new video. And in today's video, I would like to discuss openings. Openings are very contended on what is the right approach or the wrong approach or all of these things. Um, and after a recent player uh, that some of you may know, Tyler1 specifically, came onto the scene and is now almost 1900 rating uh, in less than a year as of recording this he's kind of proven a lot of people wrong a lot of people believed you have to play some sort of classical mainline opening in order to become a relatively strong player in this case i would say a strong player is someone that's online around uh, 1500 or above as that's better than most people will be on uh, specifically chess.com here you can see uh, just what percentile you would be if you were at that rating in the first place now when it comes to openings a lot of people have this idea that main lines are pretty much a necessity and i usually agreed uh, especially for a um, long period of time in my chess development trying to get to 2000 over the board and 2000 online one thing that ended up happening was I started getting burned out around 18 to 1900 and I decided to try some weird approaches or funny ideas uh, in the opening because, well, I never took them seriously before, so might as well, you know, just try it, uh, try something fresh and new. And it was actually the reason why I crossed 2000 in the first place. It was a lot of fun. It was fresh. And it's an opening that people are generally underestimating quite a bit. Now, when you are playing with the white pieces, you're most likely to play e4. That's generally the convention here. But of course, there are other moves, d4, c4, knight f3, all of this good stuff. Now, generally, when you play e4, you're going to be seeing one of usually four responses. Uh, the first one is e5 or c5, I guess first two. These are the big ones, the king's pawn opening and the Sicilian. Usually, people that play these openings are quite well booked up they know a fair amount because generally you might need to especially if you just look at the roy lopez here immediately after bishop to b5 as a beginner you would need to know a couple traps first off what if you play a6 a6 is uh, what was considered to be for a long time the main line knight to f6 the berlin has taken over a bit but after a6 and bishop takes c6 d takes c6 looks like this pawn's hanging turns out it's not because of queen to d4 but these are things that you have to know by well learning them and uh yeah you have to make your way through the openings and uh, of course white's going to know this as well and uh you're going to have to venture a lot further and uh, know a lot more about the opening when you're playing e5 the same goes for the sicilian maybe a little bit less so in my experience i feel like a lot of people when they're playing with the white pieces they struggle a lot more against the e6 sicilians which are a lot less played than the main lines of d6 and knight to c6 so they're worth a consideration as well next up is the french or the caro Khan. and these actually score a lot better than you'd expect at the lower levels i would say anywhere from under about 16 to 1800 you're going to see people really really struggle to find a good position especially in my opinion against the french when you play these positions right here whether you play knight c3 or you end up playing e5, let's just say e5 here, uh, black gets this really annoying pressure on the d4 pawn. And honestly, it's kind of hard to know what you're supposed to do here. Of course, you should reinforce your center, but after that, what's next? You have to go for some sort of kingside attack, and even if you are experienced with these openings, it's not always completely obvious. And I find that black can have a pretty decent position practically even if they sacrifice some objective quality for that. Meaning that, you know, the engine might not be considering this to be an equal position, but it doesn't really matter when in practice, black is scoring just as well as white under the master level. Going back a little bit, another opening that kind of bothered me a lot as uh, white was c6, d4, d5, and after e5, playing this move c5. It looks a little strange, but extremely annoying because all of a sudden 
you're just playing a French advanced where you just delayed this move e6, so your bishop is still able to develop. All of a sudden, you solve all of your problems. Of course, there are problems for black here, but it takes a lot of understanding to know what to do. And again, if black just needs to know a few lines and you need to know a lot, again, you need to know the Karakhan, you need to know the French, you need to know e5 openings, you need to know Sicilians, it starts adding up quite a bit. And this is why I ended up deciding on the move knight f6 uh, for a while, when I was around 17 to 1800. And believe it or not, knight to f6 is one of the best scoring moves against e4 when you consider specifically on Lee Chess now, because they have uh, an opening database, when you do consider the 2200s and up for blitz and longer time controls. So arguably the time controls that matter the most, which is kind of shocking uh, because when you think of the Alakine Knight to F6, you think, oh, this is just a complete sideline. It's worse than the Scandinavian, and Scandinavian's already a sideline compared to the main, the four main lines. But what are you supposed to do here? There's a couple options, but realistically, black is having a good time. And this is exactly what I wanted to talk about for this video, is that I think a lot of people are approaching openings wrong. I think if you get a practical advantage or a practical game going, it matters a lot more than the objective value. But there's obviously some nuances there. You can't just play a completely lost position out of the opening and expect to have an equal result. But of course, with something like the Alakine, you might be in engine terms 0.5 to even uh, one point worse. But again, it doesn't really matter too much when there are over a million games in a database of 2200 plus players playing online and they're struggling. Uh, you check down the list as well, and most people are struggling as well. Uh, generally, people at this level will be a little bit better against the French because they'll understand the concept of trying to maintain your center, and usually the maintenance of a center is uh, the way to actually keep that advantage and uh, try to trip your opponent up for wins, essentially. But with knight to f6, it seems like this problem doesn't go away until you're over the board playing classical chess uh, with math masters. That's about it. If you check master databases, uh, they're doing relatively okay here. But again, if, if you don't have a title, I think this is something that you should absolutely consider. Not just the Alakine, but if there's an opening that you're kind of on the fence about, but it's a position that you enjoy playing, I think that is much more important than sticking to e5 or c5, the Sicilian, uh, just because you're told to. Now, let's check out one of the main lines just to prove a point here. After e5, knight d5, c4, knight to b6, you could play d4 here, but most likely it will transpose. Uh, there's a couple options, but believe it or not, black is either scoring equally here or better, again, when you're comparing 2200s and up online, with uh, blitz time controls or better. So uh, yeah, you can play moves like f4 here or e takes d6. f4 is actually probably one of the most uh, serious ways to play against the opening, but uh, black has a 48% win rate compared to white's 45%. This doesn't mean you can't find sub variations of playing well, but when you're looking at the general consensus of an opening and you see here, oh, okay, it's plus 0.6 according to the online engine, it doesn't really mean anything if it can't be proven with an extensive amount of studying. And again, when you're playing as white, there's a lot of onus on you to try to find some sort of opening advantage, which, again, if you play the main lines, there won't be an advantage to have. Here, of course, there is a technical advantage, but uh, I think if you are playing something like the Alakine, the French, or the Karakhan, uh, something that is slightly suboptimal or straight up suboptimal like the Alakine. There's a lot of practical play because you have a lot more experience in the positions. And again, it's up your up to your opponent to prove something. If they do not prove something, then there's a bit of a psychological edge to it too. Again, imagine you have all of this space in the opening. You play C4, D4, and F4 here. 
and you can't get anything. That would be very unfortunate. And after knight c6, black is scoring 50% of the wins, white 43%, the rest, the 7%, are draws. And uh, this position after knight c6 has been reached 60,000 times uh, in online games. So again, I would just like to reiterate for this whole thing, make sure you're choosing the openings that you enjoy. Make sure that they're not just completely losing. Again, Alakine, if someone tells you that the Alakine loses by force or that the Karakhan is losing by force or anything like this, it's just simply not true. Don't believe a word of it. And again, look at the practical results. There's databases online where you can see players that are not masters and how they treat these types of openings. Uh, and most of the ways they're treating them, yeah, they're not doing it correctly. And as a couple examples of how difficult it is to prepare for everything with the white pieces, you could just look no further than the candidates tournament, where Hikaru Nakamura played the move C5 uh, and E5 after this position here. D4 takes, takes, knight to F6, knight to C3, and E5, which is known to be... Uh, not a great move, but with a bit of preparation, Hikaru Nakamura did fine in that game. Uh, and that's kind of really telling that you can play what is clearly an inferior idea and be fine. And as another example, you can look again at Karawana when he played against Fresh, where after e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to f6, you see a normal Petrov, a very testing mainline. And then your fresh try something different. Knight takes e4 here, which is the Damiano. Again, not a objectively great opening, but your opponent might need to know a really long forcing line. For example, here, a good way to get a slight advantage, again, slight is probably about the best you could do here, is queen e2, where after queen e7, you have to play this move. Queen takes e4, d6, d4, takes on e5, takes on e5 with the pawn. Knight c6, the best move here is really difficult to see. A lot of people might try something like bishop to f4 and end up in trouble, but you don't want to do this. For example, bishop f4, there's this move g5, and the problem here is bishop g3 is played 83% of the time with opponents that are 2200 plus, and th that's really telling. White's losing now after f5. F5, you cannot take on passant, you move your queen away, and F4 wins the bishop on G3. But I digress. So instead here, you probably should just play knight C3, give up the pawn. Actually, this is the uh, testing move here. And then white scores quite well. But again, you'd have to know this and realize that you are giving back the pawn. So uh, understanding how to play this type of position and getting an advantage from it with knight takes, bishop to f4 and bishop to uh, d6, this isn't so easy or so obvious, but yeah, uh, this is pretty important to know. Again, the tricks don't end actually. For example, if you castle, there is knight to d3 check, um, but yeah, you have to play bishop g3 here. But that's not to say that playing some sort of sideline is always a good thing. You can try it and it still fails. For example, Daniel Naroditsky tried playing the Petrov himself in the US Championships and ended up losing that game. It was an interesting try though, and again, it's a reasonable practical one, but when you are at the high grandmaster level like that, it is a bit harder to get away with those things because there is a lot more time for studying in those cases. Anyways, going back to things, I just wanna say again, especially if you're playing as the black side, I think it's a lot more obvious um, that people are going to be playing e4, d4, c4, even b3, and uh, people might be okay with giving away the advantage as white by playing something like b3, but people are a lot more hesitant, I think, to play some sort of sideline as black where you are going to be admitting some objective disadvantage there. But realistically, especially if you look at results of mass amounts of players, things might be okay. So just uh, some food for thought. And I guess that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.